Good morning, folks. I hope you're having a good start to your day. My name is Toki. I am an educator here at Your Peace Aquarium of Canada. Um, we're located in down, down, downtown Toronto, if you haven't been to our aquarium. And today, I'll be gushing to all of you about our paddlefish. Uh, those are the fish that are swimming near the top and uh, near the top of the habitat. Uh, but before we get into the uh, nitty gritty of today's animal, uh, please join me for a land acknowledgement. So, Ripley's Aquarium of Canada acknowledges that we are on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13, signed with the Mississaugas of the Credit, and the Williams Treaties, signed with multiple Mississaugas and Chippewa Band. Today, the meeting place of Toronto, also known as the Toronto, meaning the place in the water where the trees are standing, is home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to work on this land. Um, at this point, you guys might be getting a really good view of our paddlefish eating. Um, and I'll talk more about them real quick. Just some quick introductions. Uh, we are being helped today by our aquatic biologist or aquarist, Kira. She is the one that's uh, bringing the paddle into the water and give, giving the food to the paddlefish, basically. Um, and Danielle is our camera person today. Oh, thank you, Danielle. Danielle's pointing out a really good view of our paddlefish eating their food. Anyway. Um, just for quick context, the paddlefish and their fish friends are in our Great Lakes habitat, which is the fifth largest in the aquarium. This habitat highlights the fish that you would find in the Great Lakes, or at least in bodies of water that feeds off of the Great Lakes, or bodies of water that are connected to the Great Lakes. Going back to the paddlefish, to address the elephant in the room, or the elephant of the paddlefish, I guess you could say, uh, they have a very peculiar looking head. Their rostrum, or the tip of their head, is shaped like a paddle. That's why they have the, they're have they given the paddle the fish name, of course. Um, this part of their body has a few uses. One is that, uh, one is that it's filled with electroreceptors, which allows the paddlefish to feel out where its food is. Um, electroreception is just an organ that's uh, found in a lot of uh, sea, in a few sea creatures actually, um, and one of the animals that have this or one of the fish that has uh, electroreceptors are sharks. Just a cool fact. And another purpose to this part of the paddlefish's body is that they are paddlefish. They are filter feeders. Um, specifically, the way they eat, and you'll notice this, is that. Um, they employ a method called uh, ram suspension, a feeding method called ram suspension, where they would swim forward, as you can see in that paddlefish right there. Um, and they're swimming forward as if they are ramming their head into the water. And then they will eat whatever zooplankton is suspended in the water. Zooplankton or small invertebrates, basically. Their paddle, their, the tip of their nose or their, the, the tip of their head or their rostrum, it actually generates upward lift to help them keep their mouth open while they are eating. And it also acts as a siphon to help guide the food into their mouth. So yeah, you can, <laughs> it's very helpful basically. Um, when the water is filled with zooplankton, when the water filled with zooplankton enters their mouth, their gills filter the food and at the same time, would take oxygen from the water. Um, typically, a uh, fish's gills is for filtering, is for removing oxygen or taking oxygen from the water. But for the paddlefish and a few other filter feeders, actually. Oh, that's a really good view of their gills. Thank you, Danielle. Um, for paddlefish and a few other filter feeders, ram, vent, ram suspension filter feeders, or those fish that would swim forward to get their food and, and fil or filter their food from the water. Um, their gills have actually developed uh, gill rakers, basically. Uh, those, were, those are basically what would, what would remove the zooplankton off of the, um, off of the water or would take the zooplankton from the water. Uh, and just behind the gill, or the, I, it's a bit difficult to imagine. I, um, at the same, anyway, at the same time, um, while the gill rakers are removing the food from the water, oxygen, they will be... Um, taking oxygen from the water as well. 
anyway, so you can clearly tell that whenever they eat their food, they open, they keep their mouths open so big. I would not want to sit beside a paddlefish during dinner. They must be very loud chewers or messy eaters. Anyway, so the presence of electroreceptors is not the only thing that the paddlefish have in common with sharks. Their skeleton are actually primarily made of cartilage. And they also have heterocircal caudal fins, or basically, if you look at the paddlefish's uh, tail fin right there, uh, you would notice that the upper and lower, lo lo lower lobe of their tail, or the upper part and lower part of their tail, is uneven. Uh, that's a common characteristic for, characteristic for sharks. Um, and I know that I've been comparing paddlefish and sharks a lot, but just to get just to get one things, uh, just to get so, just to straighten things out, <laughs> um, they are not closely related at all. This is just a really good example of convergent evolution, where organisms that are not closely related would develop similar adaptations. It means that uh, this adaptation or uh, the few adaptations that I highlighted or that I mentioned, um, it's extremely effective. It's really useful for, animal, for fish, so much so that two unrelated fish decided that they both want it and they have it on their body. Now, the fact that these paddlefish eat zooplankton, which are really small invertebrates, and yet they're one of the biggest freshwater fish in North America, blows my mind. Historically, paddlefish are known to reach a length that's greater than two meters or greater than about 6.5 feet and a weight of about 60 kilograms. Um, I'm not sure how accurate this is, but I heard, uh, take this with a grain of salt, that the biggest paddlefish ever found was bigger than a pickup truck or about the same size of a pickup truck. Unfortunately, nowadays, the average size for paddlefish seems to be decreasing. Uh, at this point, some of you must have wondered that, Toki, I've never seen a paddlefish in the Great Lakes before. You're lying. I'm pretty sure they're not there. Um, believe it or not, paddlefish, actually, uh, or people that live near Lake Huron, uh, around Sarnia, and uh, People that live near the Spanish River, also near Lake Huron, and uh, the Nipigon River have reported sightings of paddlefish. So yeah, they have been found in the Great Lakes or in waters close that's, uh, that feeds off of the Great Lakes. Unfortunately, the last sighting was in 1917, mm -hmm. 104 years ago. Paddlefish are actually considered extirpated in Ontario, which means that at one point in time, they roamed the waters, uh, in, the waters in Ontario, but not currently. Um, they're still alive. Uh, these paddlefish, they are American paddlefish. Um, they're still alive, uh, but they are mainly found in the Mississippi River uh, in the United States of America. Now, this would not be some time spent with us educators here at the aquarium or some time spent at the aquarium if there isn't any conservation message. So uh, conservation message time. So paddlefish are actually listed as vulnerable by the IUCN. The reason why they've become extirpated in Ontario, it's not, it, it's not entirely known. Some ideas out there mention that it could be a combination of overfishing them for their eggs because it's sold as caviar. And also uh, that in combination with their spawning ground uh, and uh, the, ha the habitat loss that's because of us humans and our development. And we, we also need to consider the fact that um, us humans, we like to put in, dam put, uh, put in dams and levees and such uh, along rivers and along streams. And this could actually inhibit the upstream migration of paddlefish. Um, paddlefish, they like to swim upwards or upstream to find really good spawning grounds or uh, really good uh, places for them to lay their eggs in. Oh, wow, these are really good views of our paddlefish eating their food. Anyway, um, the issues that I mentioned are made worse by the fact that paddlefish are actually, they are slow to reach sexual maturity or they take for, they take a while uh, before they become, they, before they reach an age where they can reproduce. Um, and also their reproduction cycle is about two to three years. 
and they need their spawning ground to meet specific conditions, like I mentioned earlier. Um, these conditions, they need to get, they, they need to find those specific conditions to promote the development of their embryos so that their hatchlings can, so that the baby paddlefish can become successful, can hatch successfully. Now, how can we help? Uh, we here at the aquarium like to share that becoming aware is a good first step. Be aware of the fact that humanity has come to a point where our actions have dire consequences that could be harmful to other humans and it could be deadly to other organisms. Increasing our awareness could lead to us making better choices. Say for example, when you want to eat seafood, there are organizations out there such as OceanWise that would help you determine if your next fish meal was caught sustainably or not. Um, also, we need to hold big companies and the government accountable for their actions because big systemic changes are essential to truly helping the environment out. Um, anyway, I will end my talk there. I don't want to make, take too much of your time. Um, I, hope I, I, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day, um, and we'll see you again next week. We have another live on, t on Thursday next week. Uh, next week, it'll be about mangroves and upside-down jellyfish. Anyway. Bye, everyone. Have a good day.